afternoon. I'm your television host, Evangelist Arlinda Thompson, and you're tuned in or you're watching Destined to Win. I am on every third Thursday of the month, and I air at 1 o'clock every third Thursday. So I would like to encourage you to tune in every third Thursday to Destined to Win. On this afternoon, I have a wonderful guest, and I'm very excited and honored that this young man, he was a, just a little young man playing the organ uh, when I can remember, a very humble young man, and just never knew that he would wind up being a pastor, a man of wisdom, a man of not only direction, but giving direction also. So I'm very proud of him on this afternoon and excited to have him on Destined to Win. Now, what I want to say to you, Pastor, first of all, Pastor Harris, how are you on this afternoon? Doing fine. Thank you again, uh, Evangelist Arlinda Thompson, for this opportunity. God bless you. Yes, God bless indeed. you, too. Now, guess what? Before we begin our dialogue, do you remember November the 19th, 2000, your first official sermon, <laughs> How to Overcome the Accusation of, of the, the Devil. devil. Yes. Zechariah 3, 1 through 4, mm -hmm. and Revelation 12 and 7. Yes. Didn't know I had that information. Wow. And I do want to say, Mother Logan, my mother is sitting in the uh, yes, studio yes. audience, and she uh, said, oh, Linda, look at this. This is his first sermon. I said, yes, Mom, yes. I'm going to bring it, and I'm going to... Uh, kind of let him know we remember wow. his first sermon what do you have to say about that, that Pastor Harris? that is something else <laughs> that is great that is fantastic of course uh, we are certainly grateful for that opportunity to have even been presented even with our own uh, beloved uh, the late Deacon Logan yes. who was uh, one of the first of uh, many to uh, prophesy that I would preach and oh, even okay. pastor he right. he even said it. He said, I believe you're also going to pass it. He said, I okay. want to see it. Oh. <laughs> yes, he sure did say that. Okay. Yes, indeed. He didn't get a chance to see it. Mm. But uh, I remember him as a young man playing the organ, and he is still, he is a young man, a young man in Bless ministry. Your heart. But the name of your church is Everlasting Light. And Everlasting Light. Say that again. And Everlasting Light. Okay, how did you come up with the title to your ministry of Everlasting and everlasting light. Well, that that title uh, that title came by way of scripture. Um, it was uh, back in 2003, actually, when I uh, had, had uh, come down with an affliction within my oh. body, in which uh, the Lord gave me a dream, and in the dream it was a man who was dressed in all white. Okay. pure white and his countenance was white and in the dream I, I knew him by face I knew him we we were very much acquainted and he read to me the entire chapter of Isaiah chapter 60 and wow. it, it wasn't until um, I want to say 2008 the beginning of 2008 that I decided to go back over reminiscing mm -hmm. uh, and I went back over uh, that particular passage of scripture and verse 19 where it says uh, the sun shall no more be thy light by day neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light All right. and thy God thy glory all right, now that, that's a confirmation if I ever heard yes one, indeed yes well tell us a little bit about yourself uh, uh, Pastor Harris uh, where your church is located, your 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 wife. He has a beautiful uh, wife. Uh, well, I'll let him tell you uh, about <laughs> well, his family. Well, bless the Lord. Uh, I um I have been married uh, 23 years. Oh, uh, I've seen that long. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, to a wonderful lady by the name of Lisa Lisa Harris, uh, and we have in our union uh, three children. Our oldest is uh, 21. He is my namesake, Oak the Harris the Third. We affectionately call him Trey because he is the third. Oh, I like that name, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and our daughter, who just started um, college this year, Amen. Shayla Harris, and our youngest son, who was 14, who just started high school, Joshua Harris. All right. Um, and our ministry 
uh, is, of course, an everlasting light, and it is located at 46194 uh, uh, I-94 Service Drive, which is uh, uh, in Belleville, Michigan, and the zip code is 48111. All right. And uh, our services, they start at 830 uh, 8.30 as far as the Sunday school, that's 8.30 a.m. And our 10 o'clock worship service, and we are out by 12 o'clock. Uh, okay. We are on a schedule, so we, we have okay. to get it done and get it done all right. right. It doesn't take God all day, you does it? You got that right. <laughs> if he's going to do something. Amen. Now, we're going to turn our attention over to our topic on this afternoon. Yes. And uh, our topic has to to do with uh, the condition of the church today mm -hmm. and then the condition and comparing it to the church of the past or yesterday. Not necessarily our denomination, but just the church uh, in the past in general. So uh, what we're going to do is kind of dialogue concerning the condition uh, of the church. And as a pastor, what do you feel you're called to do? Uh, as a pastor, I'm called. Or tell, let me interrupt. Mm -hmm. What are pastors called to do? What do you feel pastors are called to do? Well, they're, the pastors, uh, and speaking from a personal uh, right. point, mm -hmm. uh, the pastors are called to uh, minister the gospel, uh, that is to win souls to Christ uh, and to lead them once they come in to the body, to lead them by the Word of God, not by what we personally think, but by the Word of God. Okay. Uh, the pastors are supposed to lead not only by word, but by example as well, so that the people can see Christ within us and so that they can see how to get to Christ. And, and so that is the purpose of the pastors, uh, to also not only minister for spiritual, but also for the social mm -hmm. and economical uh, welfare of humanity. Okay. Now, where do you feel on a scale of 1 to 10, where do you feel you are on that scale? Well, I will tell you, uh, uh, I will tell you like this. As the <laughs> Apostle Paul said, he says, uh, I count it not as though I have attained, but this one thing I do, I press toward the mark for All the right. prize of the high calling, <laughs> which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, so I'll leave it there. Okay. <laughs> I, I, you're right, Pastor. Don't put you on no scale. You yet pressing. I love Amen. it. Amen. Okay, don't he doesn't want to be on a scale, so I apologize. You know, you're all right. You all right. <laughs> so uh what is you feel is wrong with the church today? As we look at the condition mm -hmm. of the church, what do you feel is some of the things that are wrong well, with the church today? Well and first of all, uh we love the church. Yes. Absolutely, mm -hmm. we are we are a part of the church. We are in the church, and that, and actually, we are the church. When you look at the word church again, it means to be the called out ones. Uh, but in the church, what you will find there is no different within the church than what it was with the children of Israel. Uh, the children of Israel, who are the chosen people of God, um, have had the tendencies to to go back against God. And what we see uh, within the body of Christ is what we've seen even when uh, Samuel, the last standing judge, uh, stood before the people and the people told him that they didn't want him to be judged anymore or didn't want his sons to be judged. They wanted a king like all other nations. Right. The problem with our churches today or the church body is that we have somehow another lost focus on salvation and heaven or hell. Okay. okay. And we have begun to focus on all of the nations and want to desire or to, de to desire to be like other nations. Now I'm not saying all churches are like mm -hmm. that. Yes. I'm talking about the body as a whole and what we are facing. Uh, and so that is the distraction Mm -hmm. of our body right now mm -hmm. and so this is something that we need to to fine tune and, and redirect our focus so do you feel that the church is compromising with the world a little more than they should uh, because we have all mm -hmm. types of things that are coming in the church now that at one time when i was growing up you wouldn't dare right 
Right. But now it's like anything goes. Oh, you're mm-hmm. judging. That's mm-hmm. the first thing they'll say. You're judging. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people or pastors may step back mm-hmm. so that they feel that they're not judging. Mm-hmm. So do you feel that we, the church is compromising with the world a little bit too much? Well, I have, uh, I do see that there is a spirit of compromise within the body of Christ. Uh, and the compromise is, uh, from what I can gather, a, a a purpose of popularity. Okay. Uh, preachers or pastors, uh, we want to be loved for what we preach. Mm-hmm. Uh, just being truthful, we want to have the the gain and the notoriety from the gospel that we preach. But the gospel does not always make everybody happy. Uh, <laughs> and so. Uh, as the the old saints would say, and even our own mother Logan would tell you, <laughs> that it will either draw you or drive you. Yes. Uh, there is no in between. But because there is a love for the world, mm-hmm. um, we do find that there are many that will compromise. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that you bring up judging is a is a is a point where people don't understand what it really means to judge. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, first of all, when we read the word we judge from the word okay. not by our own intellect and understanding but when people use the word don't judge they really don't understand and interpret it properly because if you see a thief if a person takes something and you call him a thief you're not judging him you are calling him what he is <laughs> okay <laughs> see but judging is when you sentence a person and you okay. tell them, right, well, make it plain, I Pastor. want you, I, I wish you would go to hell. Mm-hmm. Or for, that's, that's sentencing. When okay. you make a sentence on, on an individual and say, this is what I want to happen to you, that's judging. Okay. Many people miss that because they are too busy trying to cover up their condemnation. All right. So do you think the church is um, compromising, allowing uh, sin to creep in the church even more so at one time? If someone did something that was just devastating, they were sat down for a while. Uh, But now it's like they're not being sat down. Uh, Am I wrong for feeling that maybe they need to take some time out with God and have a seat for a minute, not get completely out, but just uh, maybe just sit back for a while? So is there compromising with sin? Uh, There is, uh, unfortunately, what I see as... um compromise with sin based upon the notoriety and the fame of the individual Mm -hmm. uh, and the gifts and the talents that they bring and even the money that they bring. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of times those things get in the way of the judgment of the leaders uh, who have to make that call and even some leaders um, uh, we have an obligation but we also have to deal with things within our own selves Mm -hmm. to make sure that we uh, do not allow our lifestyle to be uh, compromised with the world. Okay. Uh, and so, yes, uh, unfortunately, mm-hmm. we do see these things. Mm-hmm. Thank God that it does not have to end that way. Okay. Do you feel they should maybe sit down for a little while? If they do something, I mean, that's really just, I don't want to call out some mm-hmm. things. Like maybe I understand. Yes. Well, I, I'd rather not call out some Amen. things because I don't want to put the point the finger. Well, I believe that if there's anything that is done that is detrimental to the church body, mm-hmm. uh, that will bring a poison and also uh, blasphemy against the body of Christ, um, there needs to be some structure, some guidelines where that individual uh, will... Uh, be uh, sat down. This is my this is my thought, yes. uh, and I do believe uh, there is scripture to back me up. Okay. Uh, but to to be sat down, but not to be ostracized and criticized, right, right. Yes. Uh, because we also have uh, the responsibility of restoring that person. That's, that's right. Considering that's right. ourselves, yes. lest we also be tempted. Yep. But at the same time, we have to make sure that the the representation of Christ stands sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, God told David, he says, um, you know, you've caused this ruckus and now you've given the people an opportunity to blaspheme. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. See, if we don't, it's one thing if a person falls, but if we don't straighten it out, mm-hmm. you give the world an opportunity to blaspheme mm-hmm. and say that this God that we serve is not real or he's not all of that when he actually is. Mm-hmm. And so these are some things that we are yet facing, Okay. but we need to straighten it out. Okay, I agree. Uh, what about the church power? Remember the anointing and the power, people were healed and miracles. Do you feel that the church has lost its power now in comparison to the church back then in the past? I just don't see a whole lot of miracles. I don't see a lot of Mm -hmm. the anointing. I see something that is imitating, Mm -hmm. trying to imitate the anointing. Uh, But I know that it's really not the anointing of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you feel the church Mm -hmm. has lost its power? I believe that the church. When I say that, I Mm -hmm. mean like miracles, seeing miracles and Mm -hmm. people being delivered and set free. Right, right. Uh, I believe that the church um, has to recognize that it has lost uh, a lot of its power. I won't say it has lost its power. Okay. I will say a, a lot of the things that uh, we used to see, mm-hmm. we don't see anymore. Right. When you talk about miracles, signs, and wonders, uh, when you talk about uh, souls being delivered from the inside out. Okay. Uh, and, and, and so... Uh, I believe uh, uh, the body of Christ has suffered because of the idea of wanting to conform to be like the world. And the Bible says, be not conformed, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, and so, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, we, have, we have suffered in this area. Mm-hmm. But there is a remedy. Okay. There is a remedy. Mm-hmm. And the Bible talks about if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, would, would pray, humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then he says, then when I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. And I, I believe this is the beginning of the restoration of the power being turned back to the church. Mm-hmm. I do believe that the church is on its way back. All right. I okay. really do. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, do you feel that uh, there's a lack of respect for the church today? There were certain things that mm-hmm. I was told that people did not do toward mm-hmm. the church at one time. Mm-hmm. Now they'll come right in the church and, and mm-hmm. uh, shoot people, mm-hmm. whatever. They, it, it just. Do you feel there's a lack of respect for the church today? Uh, the church body has suffered a lot of... Um, um, uh, disregard and disrespect um, because of many things. Um, It is unfortunate. Uh, And I will say, um, you know, it is something that we as a body has to recognize uh, and and straighten out. Uh, And and the the main purpose is is that we as a body will, uh, will put Jesus back at the forefront if we're going to regain that respect uh, from the world, uh, people watch us. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. They don't. They won't pick up a Bible, but they read us. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 right, the writer said we are living epistles, That's yes. read of men. Mm-hmm. So they will watch us, and they may not say anything until we do something. Oh yeah, they're waiting. Oh, you did that. Right. Did oh yes. But then they're also waiting for the right time to pe- speak to us. I've had people mm-hmm. come to me and say, you know. Mm-hmm. Are you a preacher? And I okay. say, yes, I have an issue. I need you to help me out with this issue. Never spoken to me before, but okay. they've been watching. Okay. They don't just watch the fact that you read the Bible. Okay. They watch your character. Integrity, too. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, do you think pastors are causing some of these uh, problems? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I have to say I this. understand. Go ahead. Oh, that's it? Yeah, that's the question. Are are Mm -hmm. some of the pastors contributing to the Mm -hmm. condition of the church today? I believe pastors are no different than and and no different than the leaders within the Bible. Uh, When you look at leaders in the in the Old Testament and some of them that did right 
before the eyes of the Lord. And there were some of them that didn't do right. Mm -hmm. uh, leaders have uh, that responsibility and also to bear the burden of what they do or do not do. Having said that, uh, there are uh, oftentimes where we face those type of things and some leaders um, absolutely can be a stumbling block mm -hmm. to the church. Uh, and I could call out some things, but I think I won't. <laughs> but, uh, but, but we do have that issue. Okay. And it is an issue that needs to be dealt with because if you cause the people of God to fall, then you have that blood upon your hands. Oh, yes. Yes. You're, you're, be accountable. Right. You're not just you're not mm -hmm. just you're not just leading yourself. You are leading people. Mm -hmm. And you can be deceptive and lead people wrong. And and wow. God will hold you accountable oh, yes. for that. God will hold you accountable for that. Oh wow, that is scary. Yes, it is. Yes, leading people astray. Oh, my God. Yes, it is. So that's something that we need to add to our prayer list there. Amen. Now, what should a healthy church look like? Or what are some mm -hmm. solutions mm -hmm. uh, to some of these issues that are coming where people are losing respect for the church or mm -hmm. because we're allowing sin to mm -hmm. uh, come into the church? We're compromising mm -hmm. on a lot of different levels. Mm -hmm. So what sh what can you do? as a pastor or mm -hmm. what do you maybe want to encourage other pastors to do so that the church can be healthy again? Okay. Well, healthiness starts with the head. Healthiness starts with okay, the head. Okay. Uh, David said when, when Nathan confronted David mm -hmm. and, 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 and he says, thou art the man. Yes, he did. <laughs> David confessed. And then when you read Psalms 51, David says, create in me, mm -hmm. not in them, mm -hmm. but me first. Yes. Because David was king, created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Then he says, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy spirit away from me. Then it says, then will I teach transgressors your way and sinners shall be converted unto the Power. which means it starts from the head confession of sin first mm -hmm. okay turning from sin and leading by example when people see that the leaders are willing to repent i believe they'll repent okay all right so uh what do you think god is saying to the 21st century church today and is he pleased well i know he's probably grieved but what do you think he's trying to so, well, you, we don't have them. Well, God does give us some things in our spirit. Mm -hmm. But what do you feel God would be saying to the 21st century church today? And, and, and that is that is in his condition it is in. Mm -hmm. now. And, and that is what I re, uh, uh, said earlier uh, is that if 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 God's people uh, who are called by his name would humble themselves and pray. Turn okay. from their wicked ways. Okay. Seek his and face. Word. And, and, and that would be the for the 21st century church today. If we really want to see the things that God has, has done uh, in the, uh, the churches, the, the time frame of the church before mm -hmm. us, if we really want to see the power be restored, okay. we have to go back into a state of really dedicating ourselves uh, we have what we call a microwave um, <laughs> mindset nowadays. Yes. Yeah. Nobody, nobody wants to take the time uh, to do the ministry as it as it used to be, even with the tarrying service. Yeah, oh yeah. Nobody. They no, say it's not necessary. Yeah. They and they and they teach you how to to yes, receive right. the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues, and uh, that's. But 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 when the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. comes upon you. Nobody has to teach you anything That's as far right. as the tongues is concerned. Mm -hmm. You will be humble to leadership. You will listen even when you don't understand. And you will pray. Mm -hmm. those, are, those are the beginning points of how the Holy Ghost will lead. And the misinterpretation about the Holy Ghost is people think that the Holy Ghost, all he does is speak in tongues. <laughs> 
the Holy Ghost is the action uh-huh. okay. of the of God mm-hmm. within that individual. Mm-hmm. That's why the Book of Acts is named the Book of Acts. Mm-hmm. Because it is the acts of the, the apostles, apostles. Yes. after they were filled with the Holy mm-hmm. Ghost. Mm-hmm. They couldn't act until they had the power. Mm-hmm. That's right. All right. Do you, do you feel that the, the glory has departed from a lot of our churches? Or you, how do you feel about that? I, I, I don't want to say, and I hope that it, I, I, I don't want to say that the glory of God has departed. I, I, I will say that um, every minister uh, and every pastor uh, is responsible um, for whether or not the, the Spirit of God will rest and continue to rest upon each one. Um, uh, to have the glory to depart is a dangerous and deadly thing. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, when I was living in Las Vegas, and at that particular time, I was very keen in the spirit. Mm-hmm. And I went, didn't know a whole lot about the churches in Las Vegas, but uh, was a part of a, a, a denomination mm-hmm. of a body of believers. And mm-hmm. we were visiting this church. And I heard the spirit of the, the Lord say, mm-hmm. because it, I got a strange feeling and even remaining in the church for a while, sitting there for a while, Mm -hmm. I had a very strange feeling. Mm -hmm. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, the glory has departed. The church was just as dead as it could be. Mm -hmm. I cannot explain it. Then I found out later on that the church at one time was a very thriving church, Mm -hmm. had a lot of members, and um, it was a very prominent church. Mm -hmm. But when I walked in there, Mm It was just dead, and I just heard that the glory mm-hmm. has departed from here. Mm-hmm. Now, that's what I heard. All right. The Spirit of the Lord, tell me about this particular church. Well, I will say, and, and you brought up a um, particular thought toward a passage of Scripture where it talks about you have a name that you are alive and are dead. Okay, yeah. But, but in that... Uh, God, see, God gave every church, when he makes mention about the the churches in Mm -hmm. in Revelation, he gave every church uh, an opportunity to strengthen up, to to gain back. Yes, he did. And so, uh, you know, there are churches that that may have suffered Mm -hmm. the the glory of God being departed, the Ichabod. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes. And, uh, but... Uh, we are living in a time frame where Christ is giving mercy. See, mercy runs out when there's no more life in the body. Mm, my Lord. Ooh, see, when mer- see, see, when life is gone, then, then there's nothing left for mercy. There, there's the only thing that remains is the book of judgment. And you are either found in the book of life and you are found uh, doing the works in the book of life or, or in, in, in God's book mm-hmm. or you are found not in the book or not pleasing in God's oh, sight. Wow. So I do believe that, that some churches have suffered, but I also believe that God can restore and revive okay. so long as there is life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Okay. All right. I, I accept that. Now, we were just very excited about what would you like to leave with the television audience? We're getting ready to go off the air so okay. quickly. What would you like to leave with the television audience? First of all, I, wa- I wanted to say thanks again to to you, uh, Evangelist Thompson, for giving me the opportunity to be with you on today. Also to our sainted mother, Mother Logan, who has come to intercede on my behalf. <laughs> and certainly we love her very much. Um, I would like to, if I can, to invite you yes. all out uh, to prayer, our 100 men and women in prayer, Saturday, October the 1st, 2016, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at New Bethel Church of God in Christ. Uh, that is 1527 Stanford Superior Charter Township, Michigan, where the host pastor is Pastor David Foster. And certainly you are welcome to come out for prayer on that day. 
All right. Well, thank you. We're going to close out now, and I'm going to encourage you to watch us next month, the third Thursday, 1 o'clock to 1.30, and Destined to Win. This is your television host, Evangelist Arlinda Thompson, and today my co-host was Pastor Otha Harris. Thank you for tuning in today.